I'm very pleased to see you, like not from the inside of of uh, being the part of the participants as I was yesterday, but meet you at this great stage. Thank the organizers for doing all the perfect stuff here. I'm trying to take a bit longer speech so you can all take your seats, do the sound check, and actually we may start. Uh, my task today is quite complicated, so um, when we talked to Alex, he said, yeah, the practical case, some practical model, something applied would be perfect to have. And then I'm looking through the agenda or a schedule and I see that I'm going to be the speaker, like the first speaker on the stage after lunch. Meaning when you, when you, when you read the title, it's like business value ranking model. The first thing that probably comes to your mind is some excellent spreadsheet and kind of a spoiler slash teaser. We are going to have the spreadsheet today, but in a fun form. Uh, but now I hope that you're not going to start falling asleep. And just a bit more to get us concentrated, that's who I am. I'm the project management office competence manager. I'm the process consultant in management and SDLC processes. Um, you may read the rest, but I think mo that most of the time I'm, I'm the person who likes to think, I like to take risk, I like to find quick solutions, uh, being on site, digging and diving deep into the problem and then suggesting options, assembling the team and making things happen with a smile. And let's hope that today we'll make great things happen together. I believe that business value ranking model is something that each of you can benefit from. So to whom it may concern? Because I'm not saying that you should leave if you're not one of the listed, because probably my list is not complete and you'll help me to, complete, to, to put more bullet points into it at the end. So to whom it may concern, if you are the head of the IT department, if you own any kind of department or the team who is whenever dealing with multiple sources of requirements, of requests, and you have to figure out how to deal with all that within limited budget, limited time, and unlimited expectations across the company. So if you want to do something numeric, stop arguing with your management, with your peers, with other departments on why we are going to do this instead of doing that. I'm going to give you some helpful tool that you may use and actually customize to the company. So I think I should stop advertising the model I'm going to tell you in advance today. So kind of a bit of uh, background and the intro. So this is the modern world as we actually know it. Companies either startup or the enterprise, they have their strategy, and strategy is usually represented with strategic goals. The next level are organizational units. I would try to narrow it down to some sort of departments or affiliates, whatever, and they have own goals and objectives. What do we have next? I'm going mostly to talk about the case when IT and business should meet and shake hands, but I want you to know that uh, it is not only IT related. This conflict or this kind of negotiation may, may take place between HR department and delivery department, between sales and marketing, and so on and so forth. But today we're going to, take mo to talk mostly about the IT, and another teaser, uh, kind of bonus of this speech, is I'm going to base everything I'm going to show you, not on the theory, but based on the most recent transformation I was uh, carrying out, and this model was rolled out in the other company, not the one I work for, like a couple of months ago, and I came back one week after revising the results of it. So I'd be very helped, probably even tune on the way and give you some like practices of how it, how it worked or how it didn't work as well. So who we have in the middle? We have the customer or the user. And what they have, they, they have their struggles, they have their wants, they have their expectations that are usually not met. And this picture might look kind of reasonable, kind of realistic, unless I'm going to add these words. So that is survival, unpredictability, increasing entropy, which leads to global unhappiness. Why? Because these two levels of strategy and strategic goals is absolutely unaligned with organizational units. I mean, there is our company, we all have mission and vision stated, but when we come to the office of company X and we ask random employee, What's the mission of your company? I don't know, but I was told to hire 20, 100 people by the end of 2020. No alignment. I mean, the goals that are here is the survival or what, how we say, like pulling the blanket, either to yourself or like 
given an old smelly blanket to the other person because you don't need it anymore. So what kind of expectations are made for the users? None. In this case, the IT looks like a garbage bin to which all other departments are continuously throwing all their requests, expecting them to do some magic and process all that. Uh, so there is a world apart. How does it look from my perspective? That is business. The business thinks that being the human, you know, we humans think ourselves better than other mammals. We are not. So this is the business who thinks itself very powerful, very proud of itself, and continuously screams, hey, that is critical, and this is critical, and everything in this world is critical. If I see it, it is critical. Please go do it, fix it, adjust it, do whatever, like tune, tweak. And do it now. And that's IT department. IT department who is actually saying, oh, no, come on, again, another critical request. Why is it happening? How, how did you make it happen? Why are we the ones who need to solve it, and so on and so forth? without realizing that sometimes IT or the department who actually solves the problems, like one who solves the problems of many, is actually the most powerful unit in the company, but doesn't realize that power. And most of the people there maybe even think how many days or months or years do we have to retirement. So this is kind of the messy, messy and crappy thing that's happening around. And I'm giving you this background uh, from the standpoint, do you agree that this is what happens in the real business in everyday life of the big enterprises or small startups? Kind of look the same, right? Wonderful, thank you. Uh, this actually came to my site at one of the consulting and the, and the advisory projects that started with the discovery phase. I mean, I don't always tell this is the solution I want to sell you. But we start with sort of discovery phase to figure out what's going on, how can we help, is what client asked us to do, is it really what we should do? Does it really solve the problem? The quick example, the, your partner, business partner asks you, give me 10 agile coaches. And you're like, like ask why? What kind of problem you're gonna solve? So there. And when we came to the customer side, we saw this kind of things happening around and it made me start thinking of some sort of alignment but at the very beginning alignment is very like metaphysical thing what are you going to align who are you going to align why are you going to align all that and then accidentally I came up uh, or probably faced two stories the first one I I now call the sinner so, as I mentioned in the beginning, I work mostly with the IT department of the enterprise, right? So they kind of, they have the sponsor, the budget owner, who pay me the money. But the senior was the other department. Let's call it the business or department of operations of the company. Whatever is happening, operations are wrong. They are blamed for absolutely everything. And kind of operations and IT are two parts of business that should actually drive and lead and move the things forward but one is blamed the other one is acting as a black hole and solving some sort of critical stuff the other story uh, what we call now the folk request is kind of what you want to do so the folk request is friend of the ceo which is abbreviated foc uh, you can you know how like in, sorry for the joke in Russian, but how to how, how to how to t type universe, right? You make four mistakes in the known word, and then you go get the word universe. Uh, so something like here, you can make mistakes here. So the point is, I saw that the two leading forces of the enterprise are not aligned; they are not working together. And these two stories, these two cases, became the the push, the power for me. Uh, to move forward with the idea. What I saw that I really want like to marry these two departments. I want them to live long and happily ever after. But the first thing to do, do you remember Romeo and Julia's story, right? What would happen, or would, what should have happened before Romeo and Juliet may got married? The fathers, the father founders of Manteca and Capuleti families should have shaked their hands first, like to stop the war. 
So the first step on the way to global alignment for that enterprise is actually helping to leading departments to at least stop fighting. Uh, I message that in the way like, guys, you have a boxing ring here. I want to help you to convert the boxing ring into a pasture. What is the pasture? The open territory where everyone have enough of, I don't know, grass, seeds, whatever, whatever you consume to have and you're not arguing with each other. So these are the stories that triggered BVR. Uh, before I move deeper into the model itself, I want to give you a quick context of the enterprise I'm going to mostly base uh, during today. So this is the healthcare company uh, gaining, gaining its revenue from insurance services, but it is not the core company, it is owned by the consortium, uh, it is not the profit company or IPO company, this is non-profit company that is community driven and so on and so forth. So if you know what I'm talking about, you can just start assuming the number of limitations you have on the way. So it's not the kind of the enterprise where you say, we need to do a transformation. I don't care, here are 100 millions, go do the transformation, go do whatever that, that will make my business work. They are non-profit and I'll give you a quick example. Every year they have the quote of the people they may hire over the year. I'm not saying like they can hire five QC engineers, developers, I don't know, market specialists, HR specialists. They have just, over this year you have five vacancies that you may fulfill, that's it. So scaling, like linearly scaling was not an option. Um, regarding the culture, when we were talking about the transformation, uh, there was a lot spoken today, uh, yesterday and today about the Spotify case. But the one thing is like maybe that stays out of focus, like beyond the frame, that during this transformation, some percentage, some significant percentage of the employees of the company left. I'm not the expert at saying that, so I'm not going to like fade the percentage, but the number of people who left the company was pretty significant. They were not fired, they left because of cultural mismatch. So kind of people who used to work in old environment, they decided we are not ready for the new environment, we are going to leave. Here is the enterprise where over the past 20 years, those they had zero firings. When you enter the office, there is a wooden plate with the bronze names on it, listing people who worked for the company for 10 years, 20 years, 30, and 40. Now go do the agile transformation in that kind of the environment. Uh, the first thought that we had with my Tiger team on the first not like sync up in the evening in the hotel, we're like, oh God, probably people go there to die. I don't know. Uh, that's good and I'm not, not telling the name of the company. But the second thought after the first week, that's wonderful place. I mean, they're super friendly, super open, but it doesn't change the challenges of the cultural transformation and process shift that we're about to do there. And here comes the beaver. So yeah, the BVR is the abbreviation. Looks very, sounds very similar to the animal. Uh, so having this culture, where well, we are limited in resources, so we cannot drop the, the load of money into it. Where we cannot make the unpredictable changes in the process. Where we cannot make people leave. We cannot fire people, but we were also asked by the uh, CHRO, no, do, do it in the way people are not leaving the company. Uh, talking about the limitations, the current state market, or let's say, how to say, region, state, district, but district is too small, let's say state or regional market, labor market, is very, is pretty empty. Because in the neighboring region, there is a huge state with great universities, with lots of IT companies who actually can, can provide higher salary than the non-profit enterprise and so on and so forth. Because if we lose people, the time to regain the person in the company uh, the cycle time to regain the person as the company is probably three to six months. And we're not losing in that case one of a hundred, we're losing one of five. So that's unacceptable. <coughs> Pardon. 
excuse me. Uh, so regarding the business value ranking, we were looking for something simple to solve the very complicated case. The business value ranking model is a process model, or now I can call it a framework, that is very simple in its nature, but has very vast impact for the company. Like when you throw the small rock into the water, there are small circles not going to far. When you throw the large rock into the water, the huge waves can, can appear. So this is kind of the huge rock that we've thrown into the water of the enterprise. And it's really simple. There are just five major components that are in there. So what do we need to start? We really need the strategic goals. As I mentioned at the beginning, the strategic goals is something that each enterprise, each company have, right? Uh, but th they are misaligned. So what we're trying to do, we start alignment from the top. I mean, from the top of the goals chain down. What do we need next? The attributes. Something that is accepted around the company that has direct impact on strategic goals of the company. We'll talk about it later, how we figure it out. And then the simple math part. There is weight of the attribute, there is rank of the attribute. We do some math, we get the score, score becomes the priority. Quite simple, right? I assume that at this moment of time, about the mechanics, you're gonna tell me, uh, Dimitri, you are not inventing anything new. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue on that. Because the thing that we invented here, we applied here, is not about mathematics. It is not about prioritization models. It's about tools that help you make big, big changes at high, with high simplicity and low complexity of doing that. So you have weight, 0 0.1 to 1, and you have rank, 1 put to 10. The right part is the maximum, the left part is 0. Uh, you, you multiply it, you get the score per feature, per epic or project, whatever you call it in the company. Product backlog item of a big size. Simple. How it looks like? Feature A, B, C we got in the backlog. BVR rate is 65, 59, 72. The first benefit is pretty simple. When management of multiple departments is arguing on what you should do next, imagine you are the IT team or development team. And you have five requests from five different departments, and all of those are of high priority. But you cannot do more than two at the same time. Imagine we do some iterative development. You can fit two into, uh, into the next iteration. You can fit all five. So here, we may say that 72 and 65 are the higher than the other higher ones. Because the thing that we invented here, we applied here, is not about mathematics. It is not about prioritization models. It's about tools that help you make big, big changes at high, with high simplicity and low complexity of doing that. So you have weight, 0 0.1 to 1, and you have rank, 1 to 10. The right part is the maximum, the left part is 0. Uh, you, you multiply it, you get the score per feature, per epic, or project, whatever you call it in the company. Product backlog item of a big size. Simple. How it looks like? Feature A, B, C we got in the backlog. BVR rate is 65, 59, 72. The first benefit is pretty simple. When management of multiple departments is arguing on what you should do next, imagine you are the IT team or development team. And you have five requests from five different departments, and all of those are of high priority. But you cannot do more than two at the same time. Imagine we do some iterative development. You can fit two into, into the next iteration. You can fit all five. So here, we may say that 72 and 65 are the higher than the other higher ones. And what we have here, we have weight and rank and attributes, like the common, let's say, calculation metrics or the metrics of attributes that is accepted across, across the company. So that's the simple thing. What is the backbone of this model? What is something that we can succeed without? Why call it the backbone? I mentioned that attributes is one of the components of the business value ranking model. So the first thing we do, we ask the management 
middle management senior and senior management to design the list of attributes that have direct impact on their strategy, on their strategic goals. Which means that if our strategic goal is actually uh, be compliant with some governmental regulations, for the US, uh, for the United States is IHA, uh, HIPAA in healthcare, like health insurance data and so on, uh, protection and, and other stuff. And here we have, for example, security risk for internal customers or security risk in external exposure. Which means that if we fail or do the project that has very low impact on security risk external exposure, we're doing something that doesn't help us being compliant. Which means this project has minimum impact on our strategic goals. So why the attributes is a backbone? The attributes, this is the custom list we designed for one of the companies where it is being used right now. So there is no data I can share because mostly you see they chose the way of putting some attributes in like in this way and then just setting department or the functional area which it impacts, right? So it's quite simple, but here is the background operation starts. It's not me or our Tiger team who come to client side and say, this is the list you, you should use, even if we do the discovery or analysis. We take all the managers, seniors and middles, bring them to one room or talk to each other individually, depending on the company culture, and let them make this thing. Don't, if you start using it, get ready, it may take months, but not less than a couple of weeks, because they should talk, they should reiterate, you should prepare them individually. But less about the attributes. What happens next in terms of components? What you need to do about those? <coughs> the attributes are long-term, so once you define them, make sure that you're not going to change them in the perspective of three to five years. If you see that you need to change the list in the perspective of three to five years, it means that you're not choosing attributes with global strategic impact. It means that your list of attributes contains some very operational low level stuff that you don't need here. Uh, they're absolutely custom. I think that's something I already said. So when you are applying the business value ranking model, either in the other company or you're, you ran it in your enterprise and now you are doing the startup, go ahead with it. But we need people to make the process work. And it's very easy, so we set two teams. Again, please feel free to call them whatever you, whatever you are used to, but just coming back to the context of the large enterprise, like two, three thousand people, maybe for enterprise that's a mid-size, but whatever. Uh, there is a corporate strategic assessment team. You know, the enterprise, they like that huge names. And it sounds like the CSA, maybe CIA guys, right? Whatever. And the other, so what CSA team does? In this case, the members of the strategic assessment team included all the vice presidents of the company. I mean, you start involving, with BVR model, you start involving people of, from upper management to do the job together with you. So actually the members of these two teams work together over a month to design this list of attributes. So what thir first thing that happens? The people from different levels, vice presidents, the heads of the departments of mid managers, they start talking to each other and trying and actually gain the better understanding how I see strategy, how you see strategy. Okay, you see it this way, I see it this way. Do we understand this statement in the same way? So again, what I said, simple process, huge impact like large waves on the water. Uh, in most of the cases, mid-managers and VPs from different functional, let's say, silos or vertical silos, that was the first time they ever saw each other. And that was great. What does the business value ranking team does? This is the team specifically responsible for ranking attributes, but then by feature. And that's it. Again, simple mechanics. So overall flow, 
looks like that. We have the strategy, we have the weight for the attributes. And weight for the attributes is set for a long-term perspective. Because the C CSA team, the strategic assessment team, or strategic alignment team, or any other name you decide for it, review the weights for the attributes once a year, half a year, once a quarter, once a month, as, as rapidly or as frequently as you make changes to your strategy. When you change the strategy of the company, or you, when you redo strategic planning, you make the CSA team reevaluate the weights for the attributes. The list remains the same. Simple. Then we take features, and the business value ranking team, that includes all the managers and all the heads, heads of the departments across the company, you ask them to set the rank for each attribute. I'll show you it all together right now to make it easier. And they put the weight that is multiplied and you get the score. And the score is very, very easy to do. You may, you may say that at this moment, uh, Dmitry, you don't get the priority. And again, I'll agree with you. Because at this moment of time, we just have some sort of rank or scaling of all the projects or the features or the epic that we have in the IT backlog in this case, or maybe that's a transformation backlog, or maybe that's another sort of scope of the project that is going to be in the company with global impact, impact and multi-stakeholders involved, that you're going to do for implementation. Case of the IT development teams, in other case, some implementation teams. So priority may be done. Business value is ranked, but priority is a different part that is not part of the model. What can you do at this moment of time before you bring it to the development? You can apply ROI, you can apply weighted shortage job first, and other prioritization techniques, calculations, and other stuff you prefer, if you need it. So BBR is pretty simple from the standpoint you can like plug in, plug out, whatever you need. Uh, and here I'd like to up. I can see it. Can you see it well? Let me zoom. Huh? No? So this is the very draft or sketch of the value ranking model, how it looks like in reality. Again, you can automate it, but I'm showing you the XLS so we can fill it in together. So this is the CSA team, represented by sales and marketing, legal, operations, processing and support. Why we have processing and support? Because it's claims. Again, I don't want to like overload you with the context of the company, but sources of requirements, sources of requests is very, is hardly multiplied in the, in the enterprise. Because for example, who are the users of the product that is being developed? The users inside the company, the providers of the insurance services, the, the consumers of the insurance services, so there are at least five user groups. I mean, large user groups there. Um, let me try to zoom in more probably. Sorry, I'd like to take care of your eyes better, but that's an Excel. But again, for general understanding, I think that would be enough. So we have the CSA team th who set weights on the annual, or let's say, on the frequent, on the fr at the frequency of strategic rearrangements. This is the business value ring, uh, business value ranking team, and you have names in there. I mean, real physical people are all involved together. You see how large uh, is the list? Again, there is a name of the VP here as well, but. Um, the list of attributes, the same you saw at that slide. So nothing too complicated. What do we have now? These are the weights that was set by this strategic assessment team. And they set it once for the, for the year or for a quarter. So this is the attribute that says, what, which one I showed you, security risk, external exposure. And its weight is one. So wait for this attribute, we'll always say one until we revise our strategy. Then we have different epics. 
or features or projects, whatever, depending on the cloud company. Uh, we may try to fill in one here. So you just put the rank. So these people, business value ranking team, get together and negotiate either projects or epics in a bulk or item by item. Again, process is not strictly defined. Come on, guys, be agile, right? Uh, find the way that is comfortable in your organization. They talk together and they set the ranks. I gave you an example of one epic that is more kind of technical-ish or non-functional, and the other epic that is more of a functional or let's say user-oriented. You may see that somewhere here there is a group of uh, attributes that are mostly related to engineering. And they have the higher ranks set by the BVR team here. While the other Epic C, which is functional, you see they have higher ranks for more kind of operational or business activities that is being done. Very simple. In the end, they have one have 51.4, the other has 63.4. I don't want to torture you with XLS spreadsheet and small phone anymore. I think that is easy enough. So kind of several advices, how we made it happen. So I mean, the tool itself is very, very easy. Yeah, yeah here we are. Uh, in terms of the rollout process, you need to get approval from executives because get back to that FOC request, right? If you want this thing to help you fight or at least like respond to FOC requests, the CEO and other C-levels has to be certain about, the, about what you are doing. You need to get their buy-in. But if, if you remember Scale Agile framework well, right, or overall value streams, team level, program level, portfolio level. Start doing it from program level. Get buy-in uh, from managers, from heads of the departments, show them the value of that, how this will help them in their daily life. Show people that time they're going to invest as the members of the ranking team, of the BVR team, will multiply in benefits and values over time compared to the hour or two a week they're going to spend setting ranks. What we do next, we, we pass all the approvals and so on and so forth. We started with individual preparations with each member of the strategic assessment team, which means with the vice presidents. Uh, probably I'm telling very obvious things right now. You definitely had read seven, seven uh, steps or eight steps making changes by quarter. Seven or eight? Seven, right? Uh, okay, the video about the penguins trying to migrate to another, to, to another piece of ice because this one is melting. Just watch, that's, that's awesome. Uh, the practices that we used, when we formed the CSA team and the BVR team, the first thing we made them to do, we locked each team in the separate room, literally, and asked them to do the team charter. I think that you know the team charter in, in compliance or referring to the team charters of development teams, of the scrum teams, it helps to define goals, define values, and so on and so forth. We made them do the team charters, but by the VPs and by the heads of all departments and managers. The other part, we made the workshop with this business value ranking team. Uh, we have like 15 to 10, 10 to 15 minutes remaining, so I won't show you the agenda of the workshop, but for 30 people, 30 heads of the departments, uh, it took three and a half hour, including break, to ramp them up in practical aspects of being the member of the business value ranking team. And what specifically that included, uh, we asked them to build the ranking transcript. Meaning, when we say the attribute, risk of external exposure, what does it mean? What, it, what, it's, what, what is the meaning behind? What's the value behind it? How are we going to measure it? Or what do we look at when we mention that attribute? So all the members of both teams understand that. That transcript actually is the part of the Excel spreadsheet, if you ask. Uh, build ranking transcript. I mean, when I'm the member of the business value ranking team or rating team, uh, there is a feature that says external risk exposure, and I should put one to 10. I asked people 
to, how would say, write down the scale. What is one, what is 10, what is seven, what is eight? Meaning that they can always share and explain to their team members what's the meaning of, of each number there. Again, what we achieve with that, we not only make people talk, we make them think beyond their functional area we're trying to break the silos with that. Because let's say the manage management of HR department have never, never thought of IT, have never thought of business. But we made them sit together and think, and now they see the dependencies. You know, like how this impacts that. Uh, Angel drew the very like amazing picture yesterday, right? When there is a guy in the warehouse. And, like people think that there is something else, but people don't talk together at the lower level. So this is what happening during the workshop and during building team charters and this thing. We make people of the same level, but different functional verticals talk to each other and see what's happening there. What are the pains, what are the needs, what are the expectations, how can they help? And we're also breaking the horizontal, let's say, blocks. So we're making mid-management talk to senior management of other verticals. So like many to many. And this starts, it becomes viral and starts to spread. What else did we do? We developed the attributes key, again, the other understanding of the attributes. Uh, we asked the teams to template input format, right? So I'm not going to reopen the Excel, but we were talking about the fact that some project, some product backlog item, some feature gets to the business value ranking team. We need this template to make sure that uh, input data, like it, the project or the feature is described well enough. You know, that minimum necessary level of details so everyone could rank it. And the final thing that actually made the final proof of the concept, we took the old projects or the old features. But the features that were stated as critical priority, you remember the astronaut at the beginning was yelling, that is critical, do it now. So we took all the projects from the past three, five years that were critical. We, do, we took all the FOC requests from the past three, five years that were critical. And actually, like, what is FOC? The guy is calling CEO and says, dude, you're my college mate, I need your help. And I mean, you're doing project or you're developing feature that impacts one single person and you're leaving features that impact eight, 800,000 insurance insured people aside. But that's, that is critical, not the thing that impacts 800,000 lives, I'm sure. So we took those projects, and when we ran through the matrix, or through the, uh, through the thing, we realized that maximum score, according to the number of attributes, the, the, the ranks, the, the weights, everything, was 220. And most of the critical projects from the past didn't score more than 35. And that was amazing. I mean, we cannot, we cannot say that using business value ranking model completely stopped the political projects or political features being thrown into the teams or to the IT. But what we can ensure definitely that you have as management, senior management, middle management, you have the numeric and quantified uh, decision-making tool. Because when, when the next time CEO comes to you and says, do this feature by tomorrow or by the end of the month, you can tell him, yeah, sure, we don't mind doing that. You open the spreadsheet and you have the, or the backlog, you have the list of items with a score of 180, 200, 210, I don't know, 215.8. And you are saying, according to our strategy and according to the attributes that vice presidents of our company developed together with all the managers of our company, the score of your request is just 100. So like middle of the scale, let's say. If you start, if you keep pushing on us, we'll do it anyway. I mean, we have no choice. You're gonna chop our heads off. But think twice before you're trying to put that thing above these projects. And the, again, and the negotiation starts and the discussion starts in the constructive way. So talking about white rocks, every process, every feature that is through there, it is triggered by the business. It is cross-functional. It makes people talk. It is very transparent. And more important, it is very hard to cheat with BVR. Because on one hand, you have, how to say, the pair, 
right? The VP and the managers who are subordinates of this VP. On the other hand, they may have different interests or different VPs may have different interests. And both CSA team and BVR team is represented by multiple people. So if at least one small group tries to make a coalition, number and simple mathematics won't let them cheat. I mean, you can do whatever. Again, this is a collaborative approach. So when all of the people, let's say, of the support and maintenance managers start putting 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, there are like 20 more people in the room and they are questioning them. Why do you put 10? This is your scoring list. 10 is not described as you're putting here. This is the feature. This is our strategy. This is the attribute. I mean, really, this feature doesn't impact the attribute, uh, this attribute up to 10. So it's very transparent. It's very easy to negotiate and people are getting very quickly engaged. Uh, what I mentioned, I think, about the numeric and quantified. Uh, the good thing for the enterprise so you have like a huge bunch of people, huge group of people spending time on doing something. Uh, if we get back to the Excel spreadsheet, which I have no time to do, sorry, uh, we'll see that ranks are set by the feature or by the epic, right? And every time the strategy changes, there is no need to for, for 30 people bring them together and make them re-rank, I don't know, 500 features, 600 features, 1,000 features in your backlog. You change the weight, CSA team changes the weight, and all the features are automatically recalculated. Voila. So in terms of time consumption and effort consumption, it is also that. Uh, usually in the end, there is a Q&A, but I'd like to start with a answer to question and they have a question to ask you maybe you can share some I don't know cases situations examples of uh, of those you already got in your mind while listening to me where you may benefit or you may apply a business value ranking model any thoughts it cancelled in half a year. Because business is this long procedure. Not really a long procedure, but in fact, business wants features which he owns one, not all stakeholders. So business didn't get. So the. the business uh, started uh, less uh, get uh, such a system. Mm -hmm. So uh, every one stakeholder one, uh, can uh, understand which features are taken into account and uh -huh. under development. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he became just bored with this prioritization. Okay, so business became bored with prioritization because it's kind of easier to just to push. power push, power push, brute force push on the people. Okay. Any other thoughts? Like, okay, your questions. Hello. Uh, does it uh, does it tool we can apply to the startup projects? Absolutely. Yes. So the mes so the uh, size of this epics it downgrades to the like the story level. Yeah. Sure. You may you may use it for any kind of let's call it project product backlog item or the project in the company. So you can rank the larger stuff, like projects or transformation projects in the company, or you can go down to the user store level. Uh, again, it's more of a question of wording and putting labels of what you call a user story or what you call a project, right? But you can scale it whatever you want, And but I think that when you like put it low to the lower level of the user story, Probably you won't need to involve vice presidents or head of the departments there. So probably you need to reconsider who should who should be the participants, the members of both teams. So the beaver team will uh, the staff of that will change depending on the uh, I think size so. of the yeah. So the lower so the lo uh, the lower is the level of the items you are trying to rank the probably lower level of the people you need for the business value ranking team. Again, you still can use the head of the departments. You can you can form even the CSA team from the executives and BR team from the VPs. It's your choice. But like what what's the cost of that ranking in that case if you spend an hour of time a, an hour of time a week of I don't know 10 vice presidents. I I think it's too much for a user story. Thank you. 
Yes, we have time for one more question. One more question? Okay, then I'll be happy to talk to you in the corridor or whatever. Give me the floor. Thank you.